Hey, it's Tom Collins, 8figurebusiness.com. Good to see you again today. We have another training video. I uh, hope you like this one. This one, put your filters on. I'm going to say something that a lot of you entrepreneurs don't want to hear um, because we've all built up this natural resistance to it, but today's training actually comes from MBA school. Okay, so stay with me. I promise it's going to be good. But the, the problem, here, here, here's today's topic. It's, it's the problem with tools. And it's really kind of the, the shiny object syndrome with tools, to be, to be honest with you. I get so many people who come up to me at conferences and say, hey, Tom, you know what? I have this tool, this tool, this tool, and this. And here's my target market. What do you think? And I think I say, well, gosh, what's, what's your business? What's, you know, what's, how's it flow? So let me, let me get into some of that conversation as well. The other scenario that I get is I have people who say, Hey, you know what? I'm thinking about doing a membership thing. Should I buy this membership program or should I buy that membership program? And my first answer is, at this point, I don't really care. There's a lot of good ones out there. What's the best fit for you? And that's when they give me the blank stare of, I don't know. Why, what do you mean, what's the best fit for me? That's why I'm asking you, dude. So here's pr typically the process that I take them through. So, what I'm going to do is, is give you the MBA school training and then we're going to apply it to, to three things. Lead generation and selling, um, uh, this membership idea and then a, a CRM conversation that I, that I had recently. So, so it's what it's called, it's called strategy, structure, process, tools, right? So let me take you through the PMI model uh, and how we apply this to our, our business. So when we got leads to sell our core offer of coaching, right? So we always wanted A leads. We wanted the top quality leads. Anything that really wasn't an A lead for us wasn't the best fit because our strategy and the way that we actually structured our sales team and our sales organizations, our coaching was built around relationship, lots of interaction, lots of trust, lots of connectedness, so that when we made a phone call from our call center, it was a warm call. That was our strategy. So, and the way we built our teams and the way that our teams had their sales process, right, strategy, structure, process, tools, then how we sold, what we sold those clients, what we used to communicate with those clients. You know, people would say, hey, what email autoresponder do you use? Well, depending on the lead source, and their relationship with them, it, didn't, it, it, it changed from, from account to account, right? So uh, let's go through the, the membership example. It might be a better example. So someone says, gosh, Tom, I'm looking at a membership tool, right? What should I use? Well, gosh, how are you bringing people in? How are you, how are you structuring your offer, right? So what's your selling strategy? What leads are you going to? What niche are you in? Right? What's your what's your overall model? Are you using call centers? Are you using TV? Are you using online lead gen? Everybody's using online lead gen. What type of online lead? Do you have warm leads? Are these existing customers? Are these new customers? Where does this fit in your overall value chain? You know, leads, core offer, back end. Is it a front end offer? Is it a core offer? Is it a back end offer? All those are the key questions of where this where this matters if it's a front end and you're just having that be a stepping stone maybe you don't want to invest a lot of money in it maybe it doesn't need all the bells and whistles if it's a back end it's got to just be feature rich and just uber everything it's a different story right but the question is what's your strategy and then how are you structuring your core offer in your selling process how are you structuring the membership how are you bringing people into the membership what are they expecting to get what do you want to deliver to people what do you want the outcome to be then, of course, you build that selling process, getting people in, what you deliver, and then you go, it's so easy at that point because you go, oh, here's how much money we expect to bring in, here's how much time and energy and effort we need to put into it to make it a really good, viable product. But that decision about membership software comes after all of these other decisions what your strategy is, how you're going to structure your offer, the process you're going to use to get people into the system, and then it's the system, what do you want the outcome to be, so then you choose the tools uh, to use. So had another conversation um, with a, a marketing, uh, well, a company, 
a product company, they have a supplement, they want to sell it, they have the formula together, right? The celebrity, the formula, the really cool bells and whistles, the cool packaging, and they have no money. And that's a problem, right? So what they're asking first of all is, gosh, what CRM should we use? We're like, oh, dude, you don't have any money. Let's start at that. What's your strategy for actually getting money so you can, you know, figure out what the structure of the business is, right? So what's the, how are you gonna run this? What's your sales process gonna be? And so they've talked about all these dream things. Well, when we raise money, we're gonna do all of it. Well, no, you're not. Nobody ever can do that. So what we've done is we've kind of drilled down and said, okay, the strategy is going to be XYZ with certain JV partners. We're gonna license out some selling opportunities, right? So the structure of that becomes more of partnerships and relationships. The sales process, we're going to rely on our sales partners to sell the way they sell, and we're going to then provide them the, the tools to do that. What came out of it in the CRM was, you know what, we need a pretty strong, robust C CRM, but the people we're working with have pretty good technical skills, so we can do something where it needs a little more programming, but what we really need is reliable um, database. We need a reliable server, reliable software that's going to work and so what we chose was something that was a little more affordable off the shelf that we could customize with our programmers and customize to each of our individual partners and wasn't really quite the plug and play um, thing that you, you, know, you get off the shelf with, with if you're going to be a little bit smaller. So this one works very well in the CPA world. We're not going to go there, but we're going to be just kind of right there with a, still a pretty solid amount of volume. Um, but that was the decision making process of how we got to this. CRM um, and our costs are a little bit different, our structures are a little bit different and yet we're not using the you know the 3,000 pound gorilla CRM that a lot of people are using because it doesn't really fit our model at this point. Maybe someday it will, maybe someday we'll grow up into it but we're also not using the ease of entry does everything for small business because we are too big for that and we need more reliability for that so we found the one right in the middle fits our needs, going to fit our partner's needs, gives us ultimate flexibility. But that decision making followed the strategy, the structure, the process, then the tools. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'd love to get your feedback on this one because I know a lot of people ask the questions of, there's this new launch, there's this new software, there's this new thing. You know what? Make your decisions based on the way you're running your business, not so much on what the cool big shot that you're watching at conferences uses. That's a really good clue because if they're using it, it usually works better than maybe something that you might choose with if you don't have any decision-making basis. But add this into the mix. Add how you want to run your business into your decision-making factors. Some of you guys don't have any money and you're buying something that's three, four, five hundred dollars a month and you're just getting started. You don't need that, you know? On an email autoresponder, a wherever, 20 bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, whatever. Get started and then ante up. It's always easier to do that or in vice versa, if you're going to run some pretty heavy traffic, you know, don't use the light tools that you know you might not, you might blow up too soon. You know, there's a difference between guru media and mass media. If you're in the mass media world, use mass media tools. If you're in the guru world, all kinds of cool tools, lots of choices. There's a difference. Be aware of the differences. If you're not sure, ask. Go on the, you know, we're going to do comments below this video. Ask there. I'm sure there's other ways we, we're providing to, to give you access as well. So anyway, that's the end of today. Strategy, structure, process, tools. 8figurebusiness.com. Talk to you soon.